right, guys, what is up? NJ Bike Life here. Check it out, guys. Got another camera angle. How cool do I look? All these cameras on my face, it's so awesome. And I'm wearing my motorcycle jacket too. I don't know why I decided to wear it. It's not cold. It's like perfect hoodie weather. I could totally just wear my hoodie and I'll be perfectly fine like that. But I decided why not? Let's wear the jacket. The jacket's pretty safe. I had a really, really, really close call a couple days ago on the dirt bike. And I don't think I want to have another close call without being protected just yet. So I'm wearing my jacket. Get over it, guys. Although it does look cool and it, it actually does feel pretty cool also. The weather is perfect. It's about 71 degrees right now. And it's just amazing. So I'm, I'm, I'm digging this video to kind of test out this camera angle. Get some action on the FZ6 because I haven't rode it in a while. I've been I've been really staying on the dirt bike, which is all right. But I had made an Instagram post to have you guys ask me questions, and I got a pretty good response on the questions. So I'd like to answer that. We'll make this like an official frequently asked questions or a knowledgeable type thing from D. NJ Bike Life himself. So the first question I have is from R Murph 3, my good friend Rob Murphy. And he asks, how many miles have you rode in a day and what's the farthest that you've rode? Well, the amount of miles that I've rode in a day was about 400 miles, I want to say. I put three gallons of gas, no, not three gallons, three tanks worth of gas in the dirt bike when I first bought it. And I was just driving around aimlessly. Um, uh, 400 miles, it wasn't all at one time. I definitely separated it up into a different parts of the day. I would ride one mile, like, Let's say one tank from here to nowhere, and then I would go home, eat a banana or something, and then go ride again for another 150 miles, and then just keep repeating that process. So it wasn't completely in one straight go, but I definitely rode easily 400 miles in one day. And I didn't even go anywhere. That's the best part. I rode 400 miles to just drive around and waste the gas because the dirt bike cost about four dollars to fill up the gallon and a half tank it has. The second part of that question, what's the furthest I've drove, uh, I've ridden? Uh, probably to Atlantic City. That was probably the furthest ride. It's about a hundred. I don't know if it's about a hundred miles there, but it feels like a hundred miles there. So. We'll say at least that trip alone was at least 120 miles, it felt like. So we'll just say, yeah, we'll, we'll say to Atlantic City from my, from Howell, Freehold, Lakewood area to AC, which is about an hour and a half drive. So that's probably my furthest destination ride I've had in a long time, ever actually, since we're talking about what's the furthest ever. All right, so I have to look at this question while I'm riding. It has like 14 parts. I don't know if these people know me behind me, but they just came like right up on my ass. So if I die right here, guys, rip NJ Bike Life because these kids are idiots behind me. I don't know if you can see them in the mirror. They're coming around. Oh no, they're following me. Okay, cool. Alright, I'm just gonna lose them real quick. Alright, so now that they're gone, I can get on to my next question. Which is from jmac87 on Instagram. What is the most aesthetically pleasing ride you've ever been on? Be specific, like time of year, weather, and place. So, 
the most aesthetically pleasing place I've ever rode is probably out in Millstone, which goes into Manchester and part of Plumstead. Around this time of year, maybe October, because the leaves were definitely different colors and already on the ground. But that's definitely the best time and place that I've ever been out. If you want specific details, it was about 64 degrees. I had a fresh hoodie on and I was extremely comfortable. And I was riding with my friend Ian. And we would just cruise there, man. And those roads are just so awesome. They're, they're very relaxed. The speed limits are nice and slow, so you don't have to worry about anyone flying or going over the roads. And it's all just farmlands. There's nothing really out there. There's no buildings, just houses in the middle of nowhere and then farms all around those said houses. So that was probably one of the most aesthetically pleasing rides I've ever been on. I'm definitely looking to do maybe like a Hoot New Hope ride or a ride to Pennsylvania or my buddy lives out in Connecticut, shout out to Slam Pig. I'd like to do a ride out there one time, but Connecticut's like two and a half hours, so it's kind of rough on my ass. Or if I could even make it on a gallon of gas or a tank of gas. So we'll definitely see, but that was the most pleasing ride. Any ride through Millstone, Plumstead area is always a good ride. All right, next question is from Matthew Riccardi which is my boy from Target when I used to work there. He says, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen or done while on a ride? Well, two days ago, I almost got hit by a guy that decided he didn't want to stop at the stop sign and went right out into the middle of the road. Don't do that, by the way. Don't go into the middle of the road. And I was within, I want to say inches of his bumper, of him riding into me. I was on the dirt bike, slammed on the front brakes, I slammed on the rear brakes. Of course the rear brakes skidded because my whole body was in the front of the dirt bike. I'm just fishtailing for about a hundred yards and I was inches from hitting him and that was my, probably my closest call. But for, as far as what I've seen, my friend Dylan was riding and we were coming to a light. He's turning left. No, we're going straight. There's another guy turning left. And, and Dylan's just riding, just riding. And the guy just completely goes, barely even slows down, barely even stops. And Dylan comes within inches of hitting this person's rear fender. And it's just like, I look behind me knowing that it might be close. And I see Dylan's hand and his arm completely on the person's bumper. Let me tell you, that was the scariest thing because he was like kind of new to riding. Next question I have is from Josh. Come on, someone go. You next, buddy. You next. Thanks, man. I wanted to be nice and let him go, but he wanted to be nice and let me go, so you can't argue that, man. It's all about the nice people. I don't know if these guys hunt or something, but maybe in that little patch of woods. Anyway, next question is Raiders from Josh Iglesias. I don't, is that really your real name? No, your real last name, Josh? Because that's pretty cool, the real last name, if it is. If it's not, I, I, I'm offended by your beauty and tattoos. But, Jiggy, as I know you, ask Raiders, question mark. Yeah, dude, the Raiders. They just beat the Saints, what's up? Cannot mess with the Raiders. That's about all I have to say to that. Next one, Saber is Ninja, AKA SaberTube. I'll shout him out, put him in the description below. Got literally the funniest vlogs ever. He doesn't do moto vlogs, he just does regular vlogs. And dude, they're hilarious. So definitely check out SaberTube. He asks, who dash what inspired you to do YouTube and what are your goals for the coming year? Well, I was never really inspired to do YouTube. I kind of just fell into YouTube after uploading my videos and people starting to like them. And a lot of people live in New Jersey, so that kind of helped. But I definitely watched a couple moto vloggers like Jake the Garter Snake and uh, Baker X Derek when I first started uploading my videos to YouTube. So those those guys were definitely had a part 
of me uploading videos. Um, my goals for the upcoming year is definitely to get a lot of meets going down, get some more merchandise out for you guys, whether it's related to NJ Bike Life or just motorcycles in general. I'm looking to get some more partnerships and some more sponsors to, again, help you guys any way that I can help educate you or help give you some advice always let me know that's really why I'm making these videos for entertainment purposes along with educational reasons so the main goal once I actually got a little bit of a subscriber base was to make videos that educated made you laugh and allowed people to really connect with me and open up about motorcycling and get people out on a bike to actually ride so I feel like I've done that I have a lot of people that watch my videos and they're always saying like dude your video was sick it helped me out with this part and stuff so I guess I'm doing an all right job shout out to you guys for thanking me and for letting me use this YouTube channel for the betterment of everyone My buddy Eric from Taco Bell, aka Jaeger036 on Instagram asked, what's the best thing about moto vlogging? Dude, the best thing about moto vlogging is having a conversation with everybody on YouTube. Having a conversation with you who watch my videos and respond to them, whether it's negative, positive, and actually take the time out of your day to care about what I'm talking about and what I'm doing. I appreciate that so much and that is literally the best part about moto vlogging. It's, it's probably what keeps me moto vlogging and riding so much so I can get this content out to you guys and so that you can appreciate and learn something from me. Which I think is pretty awesome. What bike would you prefer? FZ09 or FZ07? Uh, probably the FZ09. This, all, this question is also from Eric. Probably the FZ09 just because I know if you get the FZ07 you're going to want the FZ09 because it's a bigger bike and you're going to wish that you got a bigger bike so probably the FZ09. Although in all practicality I would probably get the FZ07 or a bike similar to that. Would you ever get a 1000cc bike? Yeah, I would. I probably would just get it um, to stare at it because there's really no practicality of using it here in the state of New Jersey as the fastest speed limit we have is 65 and anything 15 miles over is a two point ticket minimum and $250 fine and I don't like fines and I don't like tickets so I'd get a leader bike yes just to stare at and if it were going to be a leader bike and it was going to be practical, it would probably have to be like a cruiser bike. Like how I had the Honda 1100cc cruiser, I would probably get another one of those and actually ride it. I would never, I would, I would get a sport bike like a BMW S1000RR or a Jigster 1000 or a ZX10R, but I would never ride them. I would just buy them to say that I have a 1000cc bike and I can ride it fast, but... And here in New Jersey, you, there's no going fast, so if you're going to go fast, don't buy a 1000, you're going to get in trouble, you're going to end up losing your license, and then you're going to ride dirty the rest of your life, so be smart with your purchases, and be smart with what bikes you get in your location of where you are riding. What is some advice you would give to a new rider? My advice that I would give to a new rider, don't try to impress your friends, don't go out of your way to please other riders, or drivers for that matter. Ride your motorcycle as much as possible and paying attention to what you've learned in the Motorcycle Safety Foundation course or what you've learned by watching videos on YouTube or videos on, dude that's a long walk, or videos on different avenues of video uploadations. As a new rider, your, your, your most important thing to learn is how to counter steer how to brake, and how to get the hell out of Dodge when you need it. You don't ever want to get caught in two people's blind spots and stuck with no options. So it's always being aware of everything around you as long, I mean, along with being able to know how to brake your motorcycle, stopping wise, in a manner in which is safe and won't get you hurt in the long run. 
This guy's got a crazy big antenna on his car. Holy smokes. You're catching like magnetic data frequencies or something. Jeez, that thing was mad. Best advice for a brand new rider, get out and ride and be as safe as you can. If you even ride around the block a thousand times, that's safe. If you practice stopping emergency, stopping like 25 and uh, you know, moving away from an obstacle or slamming on your brakes and seeing where the skid points are and where the actual braking points are, that's probably your best thing that you can ever do as a new rider. That's exactly what I did as a new rider. I never went to the motorcycle safety course, so Take that advice because that's what's keeping me safe out here on the roads. Next question I have is HIDs or LEDs from Megan. Um, I'd go with both. Anything's brighter than the halogen bulbs that I have on my bike now. So I would definitely go either one of those because they're both more than brighter than what I have currently. Yo, Phil! Yo, what's up, man? It's Dorian, yeah. How you been? Dude, what's up, man? How you been? <laughs> that's always good, man. That's funny to see you around. I haven't seen you in forever. Here. Yeah. Right, bro, be good. Take it easy, man. Also, I want to give a big shout out to everybody that asked me for my stickers. I have mailed out most of everybody's. You should be getting them soon. If you do, tag me on Instagram, post it on Instagram, and let me know that you posted it or post it on Facebook. I will definitely give you a shout out. And here's a couple pictures of people that have installed them onto their bikes and have already enjoy the nj bike life perks of being a subscriber get free nj bike life stickers that i designed myself i hope you guys enjoy them they're kind of completely general to the new jersey area so there's nothing really branded towards me but i'm definitely giving them out to everybody so if you watch this video now hit me up on instagram hit me up on uh, facebook both of the links are in the description below and that's how you can get your stickers I'm gonna answer this question and see if Anthony comes out. He hates when I come here when unannounced, but we'll see if he answers. He probably won't, but I won't even be mad if he doesn't because it's really comfortable out and I'm just trying to find some questions for you guys. All right, I got one more question, I think. Dude, my friend John has a picture that's blowing up right now and I'm jealous that my life sucks so bad. Would you ever wear open face helmet? That was another question from Megan on Facebook. Um, yeah, I probably would. If it was hot as hell and I wasn't going too far and I kind of had a feeling of how many cars would be there and I would die, yeah, I'd probably wear one. And then modular helmets. Yeah, I'd probably rock a modular helmet, although they're very strange, but I would probably wear one. My lovely YouTube followers, I hope you appreciate the angle that I give you here on this front camera. I'll see if I appreciate it because I haven't seen what it looks like. I didn't even bother testing it. This kind of video acts as a test. But I hope you guys appreciate it. It's definitely fun for me to make it. I hope I synced up the video just fine. And I'll see you guys next time. NJ Blake Life. See ya. What's up, guys? Well, I haven't done a video of my camera setup yet. I figured I'd do that today. Well, first, you need a GoPro mount. I use the GoPro Hero 3, uh, the white edition, nothing special. But I, as you can see here on my helmet, I have it mounted on the side of my helmet. And I also have it mounted on the front of my helmet. The one on the front is really nice. I don't have the J-hook that was on there.